Hi, my name is Thomas Holland and you're watching Throttle House. This is the 2018 Kia Stinger GT and it continues to impress me. Some of you might have watched my video where it beat a Mustang GT in a drag race. And on the road, the news is good too. Well, you are certainly getting your value for dollar here. I mean, look at it. It's lovely and imposing in real life. In fact, I got more looks and comments in this car than any other I've tested this season. Thankfully, it can also walk the walk. 365 horsepower is delivered through a rear biased all-wheel drive system and a very fast seven-speed transmission. But the elephant in the room is that it's still a Kia, and that seems to bother some people. So the question is, should you be embarrassed to spend $49,000 on a Stinger? Well, let's find out if the Stinger can show us that Kia deserves our respect. But first, let's talk about that drag race really quickly. There is, if you are a Mustang owner and you happen to be watching this video, I'm sure you have a thing or two to say as well as what you wrote in the comments. Uh, but the reason that the Stinger was able to beat a Mustang, which technically can run lower quarter mile times on the drag strip, is because of the surface traction. If the traction is low, the all wheel drive system in this car, which is a longitudinally mounted, rear wheel drive based proper all wheel drive system like you get in a BMW, it was able to put the power down really well. There was no wheel spin and it just launched itself down the drag strip. And the Mustang, while it was almost able to catch up, it couldn't do it. It couldn't catch up in time. And to be perfectly honest, the Stinger has got some legs on it when you actually get up there. Because this car has a 3.3 liter twin squirrel turbocharged V6, which makes a whopping 365 horsepower and 376 pound-feet of torque. And that torque, thanks to those twin scroll turbochargers, is available below 2,000 RPM. Well below it, actually. Which means that when you put your foot down, you just put torque to the tarmac really effectively. So that's why it was able to beat the Mustang, okay? And out here, on a back road like this, the fact that it weighs over 4,000 pounds isn't an issue for fun. It really isn't. So how does this Stinger drive? Well, it drives like a GT car. This Don't expect this to feel like a Miata if you were looking at one. It feels like a really powerful, luxurious GT car, okay? I tested the Genesis G70 very recently. You should watch that video. And that feels like a slightly sharper Kia Stinger in every respect, okay? It feels a more athletic than this does. However, it's not like the Stinger is loopy and dopey and boring. No, it's not. It still feels very good. You can tell where the weight is in the car. As I said, it's a longitudinally mounted V6 engine and it can direct most of its torque to the rear wheels, which means that when you apply power in a corner, you get corner entry and corner exit oversteer if you do it correctly. Now, the biggest issue is that the Genesis G70 has a limited slip differential in the all wheel drive version in the rear mechanical one. This does not. The Stinger has an open diff in the rear. And if you watch my Kia Stinger video, I did some pretty wicked power slides in the Mustang, but in the Stinger, I wasn't able to do a proper power slide. You can't get throttle on rotation in the car, unfortunately. It just spins the inside wheel. If you watch, um, I'll overlay the video right here, you can see that inside wheel just lighting up and turning into smoke, and you don't get any throttle rotation out of it. That doesn't mean that it doesn't naturally oversteer though. If you turn into the corner and you kind of lift off the throttle a little bit or you trail brake into the corner, the natural balance of the car will allow you to rotate it through in a pretty like racing style line, which is why Colin and I were very impressed with it in that One Track Mind episode. So with that said, the Stinger does have the legs. It does have performance without a doubt. Don't think that it doesn't for one second. This is a very impressive car. Now, we've got a couple of different driving modes, uh, some of which are actually very handy. So comfort mode, dampers are nice, steering is nice, engine is normal. It shifts up at predictable points. If I pop it over into sport mode, tightens everything up a little bit. Kind of give you a little bit of a surge of throttle as you, uh, as you shift over into sport mode. And it will uh, downshift more aggressively. Obviously, that's usually what sport mode does. Now, it also makes the steering a little bit heavier. Um, but it's one of those situations where I can tell that it's kind of artificial steering weight. There's electric power steering, obviously, so they're just kind of either backing off the motor or giving it some artificial assistance. It doesn't seem to change the feedback in the front end at all. Um, 
It does sharpen up the motor quite a lot though, and it becomes very, very responsive. Like, I genuinely like the engine in this car. It, it, I can't actually find a fault of it. Very recently, I was just hanging out with some friends, and I hopped in uh, a brand new M4. And that car actually didn't really feel any faster than this at normal speeds. When you really crank the M4 out to its red line, yeah, you could tell there's more uh, horsepower. But for the most part, this car feels as fast as a BMW M car. <laughs> Oh, 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 buddy, slow down, holy. The brakes are okay, um, but you can definitely tell that there is quite a lot of mass. As I said, over 4,000 pounds in this car easily, and it doesn't scrub off the speed like a sports car would. So keep that in mind if you're planning on doing a track day with it. I would upgrade the brake pads if you were gonna do a lot of tracking with it. But this car isn't really meant for the track, which is why we have some other really good modes. We've got an eco mode, which makes the engine response quite dull, but improves fuel economy. We've got a smart mode, which I actually really like. So it kind of keeps you in comfort mode or eco mode, depending on if you're driving slowly, and then you give it some gas and it will kick you into sport mode like that and sharpen everything up. And then it keeps it there for a little while, which is nice. So you kind of just leave it in, in, in that mode and it does exactly what you want. The car just does exactly what you want. You know, sometimes you get in cars and you feel like the transmission is fighting you. It just doesn't agree with you. You don't agree with it and you don't get along. This isn't one of those cars. It just kind of does what you want. Custom mode is nice too. So I can go into settings on my touchscreen here and I can steering wheel, suspension, all wheel drive, active engine sound, engine and transmission. I can adjust each of those individually to my liking. So I've got the all wheel drive system in sport, which diverts more power to the rear for that more rear wheel drive feel. I'm going to head on over to uh, the steering because I like that in sport as well, but I want the suspension in comfort so it's more comfortable on the road. Not that the sport setting is very stiff in this, but the comfort is just really nice. Okay, done. Engine and transmission is in sport. If I wanted to have the, the good all wheel drive for the winter for fun, and I just didn't want the engine to be that ridiculous, I could put the engine in uh, normal mode, which is nice. And we've got paddle shifters. Here's the thing with them. You click down and there's no way to uh, put it in manual mode permanently. You kind of just click a paddle and it keeps it there for a little while, which I'm not a big fan of. I want to be able to select manual and have it stay there. But either way, listen to the shifts. Second gear. They're fast. The shifts are fast. They're not actually, as I said, but that M4, they're not really any slower than an M4 with a full DCT. And this is a, a torque converter, which means that at low speeds, it's quite normal and nice. And speaking of low speeds, we have an auto hold feature here. So if you're just cruising around the city, and you're doing a lot of red lights, click the auto hold and it will, you can take your foot off the brake at a red light, even with a torque converter. That's just really nice. And it just sits there comfortably. Here's the thing, the performance of the Kia Stinger is definitely good. It doesn't quite have the sharpness of the G70 and it does not have the ability to pull off wicked power slides like an M4 or an M3, but it is still very impressive in its performance. However, the thing about the Stinger that I like is that it does most of that and all of the comfort. Here's why this is a very good car. Take away the performance. Let's just say I don't care about that right now, which I don't. I'm gonna put it in comfort mode. And the Stinger becomes a very good daily commuting car. These seats are fantastic. I'm comfortable. We're in the highest level package with this particular test car here. And these seats, they're Nappa leather, and we've got the little under thigh supports that come out underneath my legs and support the underside of my knees, which means that I have a very large base to sit on. The bolsters, while being effective, do not dig into my legs. And I've got these uh, adjustable side bolsters here, which are electronic and they can come in and come out and give me exactly the support that I want. Um, on this package, I also have a very nice touchscreen, which I'll get to in a minute, and some uh, on-road safety features, which work very well. We have adaptive cruise control and a heads-up display. The heads-up display is excellent. It's green. I think you can change the color of it. Actually, I haven't figured that out yet, but it's in an unobtrusive spot and it's very easy to read. And when I select cruise and set my speed, it gives me my distance that it's going to hold me to the next car. And I can adjust that right here with a little button so I can have the uh, lead time that I want. Okay, now with that said, it does a really, really good job. Some cars will cut this adaptive cruise control at 40 kilometers an hour. This one doesn't. It can bring you right to stop and go traffic, okay? Which is 
makes it really, really nice for daily commuting. And on top of that, we have a lane keep assist, which I can turn on right now. And that will A, warn me when I'm about to leave a lane, or B, on the highway, it will actually steer for me a little bit. It directs me back into the lane and it does a very good job. I don't see it as being any better or worse than Volvo's pilot assist. And as long as you keep a couple fingers in the wheel, you sit back in these chairs and on a long highway commute, you do pretty much nothing. And in this package, we have the Harman Kardon sound system, which is very nice. So put some classical music on, turn the cooled seats on, and the adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist does 99% of your drive for you. And you just sit back and relax. This is genuinely a comfortable car to cruise in. Everything that you touch feels premium. Oh, it just beeped at me because I went a little bit too close to the edge of the road. Everything in the car in the interior feels quite premium. There is some indication of plastics here and there. It's not like the inside of an Aston Martin. Don't expect that. It is just a $50,000 luxury sports sedan. But the dashboard is soft touch. There's some leather stitching up here. The side uh, aluminum kind of fascia on the where the handle is looks really nice. Uh, I've got a, quishy, a squishy armrest here, a squishy armrest here, and a kind of a brushed aluminum on the console, which is not piano black, which I like. So it doesn't actually show any fingerprints and it always looks expensive. Okay, so the interior of the car is very good and my favorite part is the steering wheel. I think the steering wheel not only looks really good, it's got a, a center, like a round uh, airbag center, which I think looks better than the Genesis G70. I said that in the G70 video, I didn't like the oval kind of shape that they had. This looks very good. We've got a little GT uh, logo down here and the steering wheel is made out of a, a fairly nice Napa leather, which this particular test car has about 14,000 kilometers on it. And we're starting to get a little bit of shine. So I don't know how long this leather is going to last. I can't comment on that personally, but the shape of the steering wheel is fantastic. We've got perforated leather and it just kind of feels good in your hands. It's a really good shape and it telescopes, which means we can get a really good driving position in here. Okay, the entire headliner is like a suede material and the uh, sun visors are a suede material and the sunroof is a suede material. The entire roof is. It's quite nice. There's no materials in here, as I said, that make you go, ugh, that looks cheap. Not really. Okay, so the car feels premium and it's practical. The seats fold 60-40 and you've got what is essentially a, a hatchback. Okay, I'm gonna turn my lane keep assist off because I had to dodge some gravel there. Um, I have a hatchback, so it opens up very wide and you can fit quite a lot of stuff in the back. The rear seats are roomy as well and there's, they're heated in this particular uh, level of trim. So, comfortable car, very effective at commuting. Let's talk about the infotainment. On this one, you get the, the larger infotainment screen and it is uh, mostly touchscreen, but we do have a set of hard buttons down here radio, media, seek, map, navigation, setup, and I have a volume knob, so I can actually turn the volume up and down with a knob, <clears throat> Honda. And the infotainment itself is very well designed. I like all of the uh, uh, Kia, Hyundai products here with this infotainment. It's split nicely in the main screen with your uh, nav and where you, uh, what radio station you're on. Apple CarPlay works perfectly. All menus, I can go there and I can go to uh, a series of setup controls which are going to allow me to adjust the vehicle and any of the uh, preferences within the infotainment, okay? I also have a climate screen. So if I wanna click the climate screen, it can show me exactly my temperatures, my fan and where the air is going all on an easy screen and I can just go right back to radio and I can see my satellite radio laid out for me with the logo of the station and all of the stations beside. Everything is just really well done on this infotainment. It is actually one of my favorite infotainments in the industry right now. There you go. Yep. <laughs> I was actually pulling up a hill and it still pulls. You can really feel the torque. All right, back to the performance because that's still probably the most fun part about this car. Um, on a back road, the steering feels fairly quick but you can feel this lean in the car. There's in comfort mode. Now I'll put it in sport and uh, do the same thing. I'm someone pulling out of their driveway. I don't want them to think that I'm weird. Mm, okay. There's still, you can still feel the mass in the car. 
okay? So this does not, as I said, feel like a BRZ. It doesn't turn in like this, no. But it does actually uh, turn in very sharply compared to uh, other sports cars. So when I compared these two on the track, this one and the Mustang that I drove, the Mustang actually felt more boat-like than the Stinger did, believe it or not, in the front end anyway. The front end feels like the tires are a little bit closer to you. You can feel that the mass is kind of with you as opposed to way out there. So when you turn in, you get that sense of rotation around the center axis as opposed to trying to haul an engine with you around the corner. It definitely doesn't have that. The BMW engineers that Kia poached to be able to develop this car, that's what they did right. They made this feel like a properly balanced rear-wheel drive sports sedan, and I wish that we could get the rear-wheel drive Stinger in Canada, which we can't. That's really unfortunate. We can get the Genesis G70 rear-wheel drive, though, so I can't wait to test that one. So if you've got a little bit of driving experience, you'll take the Stinger out, and you will be impressed by it. You genuinely will. It feels like a well-balanced sports sedan. And that is probably the best part about it because it can do that. It can do the rear wheel drive sports sedan feel and it can do outright comfort. Now, pretty much the only thing that I would say that right now BMW Mercedes has on this car in terms of uh, dynamics and refinement is for some reason in the middle of a corner with the Stinger, you will get this little upset. If you hit a bump, you'll kind of get this shuttle in the car and it feels a little bit unplanted, okay? Which is just maybe it's first generation. There needs to be some suspension design refinement to be able to keep it planted, like rock solid in the middle of a corner, right? I want to be able to feel the understeer and oversteer come on predictably. I don't want it to be bumped into oversteer. Okay, so when I go through a corner, these are very smooth roads, that's why I film here, but in a, if there's a bump in the middle of the corner, I can't replicate it right now, you feel this kind of shuttle in the back. If you're sitting in the back seat, you can feel it even more. The G70 does that a little bit, but I don't remember it doing it as much as the Stinger. It probably comes down to the, uh, the different dampers and suspension setup in the G70. The Stinger is more set up for comfort than it is for performance. Keep that in mind. Okay. So, the Kia Stinger. This is a very good car. I still like it. I think it looks really good. Well designed. It's quite a large car, but it is still fun to drive, and it is still practical and comfortable. For this price, it's really kind of hard to argue with that. So, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell. You know what to do. You can also buy these t-shirts. They say Throttle House. Car reviews, car builds, car culture. You can buy my Spreadshirt shop down in the description. I also have a website, thethrottlehouse.com, where there is lots more content. And make sure you check out my One Track Mind series that I do with the Pinnacle Driving Academy. Colin and I present proper track reviews at Cayuga, Toronto Motorsports Park, where we take cars like this and put them up against things like a Mustang. We've got more episodes of that coming out this season, so make sure you check that out. It is its own thing. One Track Mind is a totally separate series from these road tests, so you don't want to miss that. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, at The Throttle House, and I think I don't have anything else to say. That's it. Bye.